Yeah. So, last we left off, you guys had all recently gathered at the behest of a hooded stranger for a job in what is right now known as the village of Moldoff. There's been a record of break-ins and stolen items. And you guys found out that a variety of these items included a silver bowl, a silver dagger, and a missing iron dwarven leg. <laughs> and you also uh, spent a good time uh, grinding uh, your employer for information and found out a uh, few things regarding the people you might be after, as well as about yourselves and why you were all gathered here. Not exactly the most thought out plan by some, and probably a lot better than some others. But after a long day of uh, grinding and grilling people for information and wondering why some things don't seem to just add up uh, the way they should, you all turned into the evening. So, before we get to the next morning, I believe some of us had some things they were uh, pondering throughout the night. Who would like to start? Uh, I guess I can. You got it. Phoenix Flameheart. The celestial language spoken earlier and the woman that you recall earlier is something that's still been aching on your mind. You still try to search your memories to see if you recall who she is. If you wish to reflect, go ahead and roll a history check. I'll say take it with advantage, actually, because of the uh, celestial language. Oh, 19. So, with a 19, <sighs> you stop and wonder for what feels like almost hours throughout the night. Like, it's on the tip of your tongue in the back of your mind. You swear you knew people that spoke celestial and someone that looked like her. But where do you recall her from? And after a few moments, you think back to why you left home and it occurs to you. That is, um, uh, Lady Delana from House Delana. Her handmaiden was your beloved. It's like, why did you not, uh, recognize it before? <laughs> <laughs> Great, I've been found out! <laughs> <laughs> So, Flameheart, what does this do for you personally? How how are you feeling at this moment? Well, my first thing would be to ask her if she... Are you going to go bother her in the middle of the night and ask about that, or are you going to wait? Uh, let's do it now. Why not? Oh, he's going to go and fucking oh. bother her in the middle, <laughs> in the of, the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. Ooh. What an asshole. <laughs> what a fucking asshole, I man. This guy. We need <laughs> prepared. So, as you, st as you stand outside her bedchamber... Do you politely knock? Do you just waltz on in? Politely knock. Oh, hey, you've already woke up in the middle of the night. You might as well just barge in. Jesus. <laughs> that would be a bad idea. I'm, I'm already expecting a dagger to my throat. You hear a few taps at your door. You've only been asleep for maybe a couple hours. Door. I get up and I don't open the door yet. I'm like, who's there? It is I, Flameheart the Escort. woman you Yeah, so I don't answer the door. Hi, nope. Phoenix Flameheart. I, like, I was wondering if I can ask you a couple of questions. About? About Andrew's day, your hand mini. I open the door, grab his chest, pull him in, shut the door. Fucking who are you? Things against spicy. Oh. <laughs> As he mentions that name and you pull him in, uh, Valindra, go ahead and roll a history check yourself. <laughs> An eight. <laughs> you, your your mind, your mind's a mess. You can't recall who he might be. Hopefully you swear something seems familiar, but you're you're past the fact that he knows that Andraste is connected to you. I don't have a dagger. I just hold my hands up like I'm gonna. <laughs> Set off a spell under. or something. Blast my face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, so your your hands up are in an aggressive manner. Yes. Okay. So. But I'm kind of whispering too because I don't want other people to hear. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> We're neighboring uh, houses, and from the fa uh, house uh, Flameheart, betrothed to Thursday. And I recognize all that, right? 
uh, upon hearing this, you do recall where you're from, the various lord, uh, lordly houses. Uh, House Flameheart, to your memory, is actually a bit further north and to the west of where you're from. Okay. And you remember the last time you saw Andraste, she was actually headed her way that way. When you were jumped at that one village. Alright, I lower my hands. I'm like, okay. Since you're betrothed to my handmaiden, I will trust you with this. Please don't call me by my name. My family was attacked by the family that I'm betrothed to, basically. And I don't know why. And they were after me. I don't know if my family's alive or dead. Were they, was your house attacked by the same people that took it? Um, as far as I know, last time I saw her, she was heading north towards where you live, I believe? The village when my family was attacked. After she, uh, when I was expecting her, when she was late, I decided to meet her on the road. Found her carriage tipped over and a black shadowy figure that moved at the speed of light. I see. They have her as well. Yeah, unfortunately. I don't know who they are. I just know that... Uh, something you'll both know as you compare stories. Uh, Belinda, you know that you recall noticing Phoenix's story that he was taken by some kind of figure, or as he said, possibly some kind of beast. Whereas in your tale, Phoenix, you realize she talks about she came under attack from one of the fellow houses. Particularly, you understand there was a relationship between her and um, Sir Raymond of House Fair. And strange that one who loves the other would suddenly attack their house and their land. Could it be connected somehow? It could be. I wasn't. I didn't stick around long enough. I went to see Raymond after the village was attacked, and he only told me a few bits, and basically that some strangers came to his family, and then his father, his mother fell ill, his father started acting strangely, and then they started attacking. His father went on a war path. That's what it was. After that, he he told me to run. As far as I could and as fast as I could. And I did. Because I trusted him. Because he didn't, he had no idea what was going on either or why this was happening. So I've been in hiding. So for now, I go by Morgana. Well, our how two houses haven't had very much interaction. If you wish, we could help you reclaiming your house. And also, I do intend to find Andrew's day and bring her home. Thank you. Perhaps by finding. Andreste, we can figure out maybe because I have no clue as what I'm looking for. Just any hint or clue as to what is happening in my family's homeland, I will snatch upon it. But I don't know what I'm looking for yet. I as well can have no information on where Andreste went or anything. We may have to visit that land someday soon and find some clues. The guy who hired us has been watching us. He somehow knows who I am as well. I imagine he has information for all of us. Seems like he's able to help. Let us hope. Yeah, we'll get back. We probably should rest. We have a long day. Yes. I had no idea who was here tonight. I thought they had found me. Well, just remember you have a friend here. If you ever need anything. I will. Thank you. Good night. All right. And as you both bid each other uh, good evening and return to your sleep, I believe uh, there was one other who's going to ponder about some documents and bring some light to a situation. That was Mr. McLure. Is he back? Yes, I am back. I've been asleep. All right. Okay. Uh, McLure, since you're pondering through any documents and knowledge you uh, already possess and remember from back home, uh, go ahead and roll a religion check with advantage. Yep, 21. Now we're rolling and good. You while and you find yourself digging through some old notes and some old, uh, uh, some old, uh, excerpts and scriptures you kept from home, uh, regarding your faith. And you do come across one, if not a couple things that struck you as odd. You do end up finding that symbol 
actually hidden in places throughout your religion. Certain documents, uh, certain uh, symbols. Uh, you actually recall one time in one of the books, uh, the cover had your religion's main symbol, but then on some of the pages inside, you would find that symbol in certain places. And upon further looking, you realize that symbol is not of your faith. It's actually of another. For that symbol represents one of the gods that you believe uh, or have been told are not of... It's of a dark nature, but also supposed to be one of the so-called not real gods, so to speak, or others gods. Yeah. Uh, this is the symbol of Sirik, the god of lies. And I'll say actually with a 21... You actually did notice it in a couple of other places as well. And a lot of those places were actually outside of the church. Uh, you could sometimes find that symbol on certain stones, on certain walls within the city. And one more prominently, on the back side of the king's crown. Another batch! I would just like to point out, whoever made this tea is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> is it one of them? Is it one of them ones where you would like lick the rim? No, because it's poured and stirred perfectly. It's not on any other part of the rim other than the part you drink. Ah, oh, my compliments <laughs> to the inn maiden. And now you now know the truth behind the symbol that uh, apparently our mysterious hooded maid. Or other figure it has. But a question comes to mind. What kind of business does a nobleman have with a person associated with the god of lies? Oh, my head's on spinning. Ha <laughs> <laughs> McClure. Screw the nobleman. My question is, why is my king got it? Is there anything else uh, you do with that? Or do you just sleep on it? No, I'm going to sleep on it. Because I... I with the way my faith is, my uh, there must be a reason behind it. So I, I for myself remain strong to my faith, but this is the kind of for me is the shit. Why, like why, why is this happening? Why does my king or my religion have something to do with this symbol when it's preceded as a false religion? It's to us to to mm -hmm. me. It is this, it, uh, like near like sort of um, how like Christianity and mm -hmm. like the Muslims would see each other in medieval times. You know, it's like no, so you not, must believe in what my belief sort of thing. Yeah, and despite it not, not being just what was supposed to be a false religion, it's also connected to a, a very dark uh, meaning. Yeah, and it's also connected to the leader of my realm. Oh, my kingdom, sorry. Which then makes me ponder that if my king is involved, is my my uh, card uh, uh, pope not that involved? Which then makes me wonder: Are my card are the cardinals involved? Are the archbishops involved? You know, it's like uh, just how deep yeah, the I, rabbit hole go, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the spider web starts to fall. Um, starts to cr be created. <laughs> right. So you spend the evening resting and being plagued by your in your dreams about where this rabbit hole really leads to. And we'll come to uh, is the next morning. Everyone's slowly waking up, and you can actually uh, smell some pleasant aromas coming from downstairs. Breakfast. Oh, yes, please. Man, I had a few too many beers. Breakfast sounds good, and that's what I yeah. smell. Think. Let's go. All right, let's go. So as, everyone <laughs> as everyone begins slowly but surely filing in um, to the main room of the inn, it seems uh, whether uh, requested or not, um, there's a table already set up full of um, various fruits, vegetables, looks like freshly hot steaming bread. Eggs, strips of bacon, and other meats. Ooh. Damn, breakfast. I told you. Yeah. Or it's full of uh, full milk and pieces. 
Well, at least we get to eat hearty before. Breakfast of heroes. There we go. Is this breakfast very sus? Hey, our breakfast, man. Uh, For tonight, we dine in hell. Are you, are you suspicious of the breakfast, man? Why was it already ready? I would imagine. Because we're lazy sods and they had plenty of time to prepare before we got our asses out of bed. Uh, and I imagine the guy that hired us put it out. If you wish to, I'm used to it because I have servants. See, oh, see, see, see when, Same. see when I, when I come downstairs, can I sit on a table by myself, just pondering what's happened? Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. So you sit, you sit yourself, uh, so you separate from the others. So, yeah. so I, I, I can like sit, sit there and just start mouth chowing. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna chow. I sit down. Excellent. The servants here are quite good. Yep. And after a while of eating, you guys find you're noticing that the sun has uh, gotten to a nice little height. It's probably about, we'll say about 10 in the morning right now. Oh, you guys, we need to get busy. We've been sitting at this table far too long. Oh, burning daylight. Let's move. Yes. Yeah, I'm usually Agreed. At, at dawn. Agreed. Yes. Agreed. We're heading. We needed to speak. With the apothecary, right? I thought we were going to. Didn't did we go to the field yet? I thought that's what we were going to do. Yeah, not yet. Check the field. That's no. Uh, we were gonna we were gonna go to the field once we had uh, done everyone in town. Okay. Okay. So it was the apothecary cool. was the only one left because that's the uh, the kidnapped daughter's father. Okay. Which actually made no sense to us. It's Right. See so you guys are on your way to the off to the apothecary. Alright. So, you guys make your way to the apothecary's little cabin. You notice he has a, a sign to a shop that's kind of hanging up that looks in the form of a, of a mortar and pestle. It's actually kind of old and withered. About half of the mortar is actually kind of busted off. Okay. You can kind of see that there's a... The front door is kind of slightly creaked open and one of the windows is busted. This must be where they broke in. I'll uh, I'll knock on the door and make sure someone's in there if they're open. And I would like to um, look around for signs of a struggle. All right. In that case, uh, Mac, go ahead and roll an investigation as you check around the area for a struggle. Eighteen. Ooh. Nice. Uh, you do find um, actually right away as you guys enter the front door, there are some um. What looks like a uh, coat rack that's been broken in half, a chair that's busted, um, some glass from the window is actually further into this building than it should be. Some of the furniture looks like it's been moved. Uh, there are drag marks on the floor. And um, as you guys come in, uh, uh, Morgana, do you call out to anyone? I kind of knock on the door and say, hello, is anyone here? You guys hear a loud knocking towards the back? You hear a... Uh, yeah, yes, hello, someone, help. I, I run back there with my weapon drawn and, uh, you know, make sure there's no enemies around as I go in there to investigate it. Uh, as you go to investigate, most of the shops have been kind of thrown around. Uh, there's broken glass, broken ingredients, things spilled over. It's a, it's a mess. Uh, but more importantly... Uh, towards the back, you do notice a rather large cupboard. And it seems that the doors have been jimmied shut. Okay, I go and, uh... Am I in here alone, or did some of the people follow me? I will follow you in. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, Mac, as you follow the signs of the struggle, they do lead to this cabin. Alright, so I, uh... I go, I look at him, and I go, be ready. And get the door unstuck and open it up. All right. So as you und uh, unjimmy the door, the DM has screwed up and tears a hole in the fabric of reality itself. <laughs> oh. I get poisoned. Uh, I believe that would be a Pastor McLure passage right there. <laughs> <laughs> as, the, um, as the DM missed his note, he tears a hole in the um, fabric of reality. <laughs> causing the multiverse. Here we go. So, All right. um, you see out fall, fall out a um, rather middle-aged looking man. He seems to have uh, uh, some dried blood in his hair. 
Uh, his clothes are tattered. He has some glasses that are cracked. Uh, falls up to the floor right in front of you, and as he slowly goes, he's like, Oh, thank you. I, I thought I'd never get out of there. Uh, you're not going to kill me, are you? No, sir, we're not going to kill you. We're actually here to speak about what happened to your daughter. We're here investigating. As you see, his face goes pale. He closes the cabinet, starts looking around the place. He's like, Catherine? Yeah, right, Catherine. Uh, where, uh, the, 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 um, the, the, there were some goblins. There was, um, some strange man. Uh, oh, oh, my head. Goblins. He, he no, did uh, say there were goblins and there was a strange man. There was... Oh, a strange the man. one that waited by the door was a hooded individual. I couldn't see his face. But... Hooded. As mm. soon as I opened the door and saw him, the window busted open, and next thing you know, I've been absconded by goblins. Oh. When did the incident take place? How long have I been in that cabinet? I want to say at least... I want to say last night? Could be... The night before? I'm not You've sure. been in there for two days? So oh, nobody okay. in the village came to visit the apothecary in the one to two days that you may have been in this closet? I think the, uh, the bigger question is, guys, is how did no one hear anything? Exactly. Aye. So, question. Are there some days where no one comes and buys or gets things from you? Oh, p plenty. I mean, not everyone in this town gets sick very often, and, you know, my skill sets are kind of peculiar, and, uh, the only one who visits me often would be, uh, mostly any hunters, or the gentleman down the way who owns the general goods store. He might buy a few odds and then to sell in his shop, or to use for something else. But this is um. why this area needs proper guards and did this man have any noticeable jewelry on him a pendant rings facial features that you might have been able to just see uh the, j just the one uh it wasn't uh it wasn't a trinket however it was um uh it was a symbol mocking. of a skull perhaps uh y yes he he raised his hand and as soon as he snapped his fingers, that's when the goblins came in. Uh, it was on the back of his right hand. He has a what on the back of his hand? There was a, a, a skull and some some uh, some artistic splash behind it. Purple and black sunburst, I believe. Uh, yes, uh, black, black and purple. Have I seen that before? Okay. No, but I have. Uh, that that's uh, either you guys can roll religion or McClure if you wanted to clue them in on what you discovered. No, I'm gonna keep it to myself. All right. Um, yes. Given the uh, anyone who has, <laughs> I guess if any of the rest of you have a proficiency in religion or in Phoenix, if you do not because of your family history, uh, you two may roll religion. Yeah, I don't have a proficiency in religion, unfortunately. Well, given your background, I'll allow you to roll that. In religion? Mm-hmm. Eight. There's religion. A 19! <laughs> uh, so Phoenix, you're not so sure about what that could possibly mean, because um, the deities your family worships are pretty specific, and they also don't really expand much about the other religions. They kind of stick to their practices. Whereas, uh, Morgana. Yes. Whether it was through your family's history of understanding religion or through the various interjections throughout your life by a particular winged figure, a symbol like that has crossed your eyes and a part of it before, in front of you before. Uh, you recall this is a deity uh, you've been told about once. All you know is that they go by the name of Cyric, you believe? And that they were associated with evil and lies. So I have seen it before and know that it's associated with that, but don't know much more. As far as the history of it, no. 
but you recognize what it represents. All right. Thank you for that. Now I have a clue. Um, uh, speaking of clues, uh, uh, has there been anything about Catherine? Anything at all? Not We haven't yet. searched the field yet. We are. We're... We will be making our way over there. Would well, you know that she was last seen in the fields? And we think the goblins may have taken her captive, unfortunately. But we believe they are hiding out in the north, and that will be our next stop after the fields. So you're going to go after them? Of course. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, yeah. We're we are. We're going there. That's what we were hired to do. Uh, Wait, can I ask a quick question? You know of the nobleman that, is, that was seen in town a couple of days ago? Uh, uh yeah, yeah, it's the one with the, the, the funny coat and hair and the rather round abdomen. Yes. Right. Your daughter had arguments or seemed displeased with him. Do you know anything about that? He, he was asking some rather, rather odd things. He, he was asking about if there were any other young maidens in the town. He was asking about... The old mines to the north, and uh, I, I believe he uh, he offered her gold in exchange for. She wouldn't really say, but she wasn't too happy with the arrangement he presented. Apparently. I wonder why he was asking for young maidens. Young maidens are most likely going to be sacrificed. This raises actually a serious question. I will ask the group. He says that he rarely gets. There are days where he doesn't get visitors, and. This hooded figure, who we can assume was with the noble right now, so he could get a lay of the land, and the noble is clearly working for him, asking about young maidens and the mines to the north and all that. All that. Why didn't they kill him? Why would you give someone a trail? Why not murder the child keep? Who potentially was well, murdered, being stabbed. The dwarf, obviously, one would have been able to kind of defend himself. But the goblins ran away. The why was rebirth edged into the Mrs. Stone's back? And why were the two people who well, especially the 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 gentleman that we are speaking to now, why is he still alive when he could have identified the map? We will uh, have further questions when we come back from the mine. Because I right, have suspicion. Uh, uh well uh, b b before you all go, uh, uh again, uh th thank you for being on this task. Uh in the assuming they didn't break into it, um, in the the side room there, if you push the little side table aside, there should be a a damaged plank in the wood. Uh, please pull that back. I uh, stash a couple particular things you might find of interest in there that be uh maybe useful. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like it. Please, cool. if it if it helps you bring back Catherine, by all means, please take it. Okay, I will go check it out. Right, um, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to get, uh, get changed. This, this robe is bloody and there's, there's holes in it now. Um, excuse me. I don't like the I fact that he's still alive. I head outside. I'm gonna check the... Aim, I head outside as well. I'm gonna check the... Yep. As I wait right. for the rest of them, I pace back and forth in the road. So... As you guys all uh, split off to do this, um, as Mac and Morgana make it outside, and Phoenix, as soon as you find the board and begin to pull, uh, McClure, where are you right now? Are you standing looking with the apothecary? Um, I'll or? Be, I'll be, yeah, I'll, I'll stand with the apothecary because I don't like him. Okay. So you watch him go into the, uh, the room behind him where it looks like a bedroom, and... As soon as he makes it in front of the, um, in front of his bed, you see a flash of light and ah! hear a scream from inside. Ah, run back in. too. Yeah, so we're gonna run back in right now. Yep. Yep. Clear before your eyes, the floor lit up a deepish red. Shames bursted out, and the apothecary now lays on the floor, crispy. Whoa, we have no apothecary now. Okay. My suspicions there are gone. My suspicions aren't gone. Yeah, that makes it even worse. Yeah, because that raises so many more questions now. Why lock him in just to kill him? After Unless someone's him. watching us. Someone exactly. 
So what if that trap was meant for us? You think meant it was because us? essentially, yeah, because essentially, if you remember what we did at the stone house, we searched, we had a look, but we never did that here because he was stuck. Right. Uh, and we didn't ask him if anything was missing. Damn it, he died. Well, my concern is that <laughs> he had he information wasn't... that we might have needed. Can I also ask, is there any markings on the floor left after the burn? Like, after the spell was activated? Um, as you look at the floor there, it's just singed. But you, no can, you, you can almost trace in the way it's singed. That I... someone left something here that was going to cause this to happen. I would like to investigate the floorboard that I pulled up. If there's anything in there, and if it may be a trigger for that trap. Who, so, who has magic, like, a knowledge in spells in that in the group? Yeah, Ooh, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Mine are more celestial. Moon Man's got Arcana. Will, will we be able to ask, uh, Moon Man, would you be able to know any spells that can, I was going to say detect, but it's not, um, Essentially, be able to see across far distances. Uh, Moon, I'll say roll an arcana check to ponder your knowledge of, a, of the arcane. Okay. Uh, whereas Phoenix, go ahead. Um, I'll say go ahead and roll an investigation to double check the plank that you were talking about. Flame Heart, watch out for Phoenix. traps. Yeah, as you inspect the board, you don't find anything on it or around it. Could have been some kind of trigger or anything related to any kind of trap in the room. However, you do notice there are actually uh, hidden behind this board in this wall. There's seven bottles. Hey, look at them. Let's see what they are. <laughs> and for Tars, the arcane for Moon's roll. Uh, let's see. What was that roll? 17. As you think about the various type of spells you've seen and heard about, there are indeed spells for communicating over long distance as well as looking in on somebody over long distances. However, they do have their limitations, and a lot of them will originate around you having to have some kind of connection or knowing, to some degree, the what you're looking at. Do we do we know about what's in the uh, behind the plank of wood? Yeah, the bottles. I haven't found out what they are yet. So, being says the bottles are being pulled out. You realize they're all labeled. Uh, apparently, they're actually all potions. Each of them have enough in them for one use. Uh, there are four. I potions come back from the from the from the highlands, by the way. Uh, one Trees potion and of clairvoyance, and two potions of animal friendship. I have pocket those. <laughs> I have no knowledge um, of potions. Well, I'll, I'll take them and for everybody in the group. We'll confiscate these. Oh, well, he's dead. Much, yeah. He ain't gonna need them no more. He's dead. Yeah, that's right. Kinda, we, yeah. we still kind of have to mourn mourn his loss. I think he was technically an innocent. Oh, you guys, you guys, yeah. we need to we need to inform the townsfolk if anybody was knew about this guy or knew him well. We they need to know that he's not with us anymore. Only really the general store guy. He says the only one that came out often. Are you sure we should? Everyone out. Everybody in town. There might well, be more people. Yeah, that would know about this. I'm just saying we need to inform the townsfolk of of a death. That's all I'm saying. Like I don't know if you died, should we inform your kin? Do we? You know. Oh, I, I, I don't know. So. But also, we don't yeah. really know who to trust. Yeah, Moon yeah, Man does have a point. If we if we they inform others of of the death, we might be the ones. Pinned. No, I'm not True. saying like going to detail. Just like this guy's dead, man. But that's what I'm saying, though. If someone is working with the stranger, they can just go like, well, we're well, well, going to pin the blame on you now that you gave us yeah. essentially evidence. Mm. When the last one to see him alive, the when the last one to what I well, watched him burn. Fire stuff. <laughs> we might need to we've, get we've um, Let us inform but the I want to inform the group about what I, what I found in the trees. Was it for you, Bill? Let's see. No. There was, there, there is one vantage point that I'm particularly um, um, suspect about, and that would be the field. There's a vantage point of this front door from the field that Catherine was taken from. All right. 
it was at just that one point. House. There was another point too, and I can't remember where it's at. The second, uh, floor. second there... floor of the inn. Second floor of the inn. Hmm. Would there be any footprints in the field? Do you know what? We have to go there to find out. Leading Let's to the field? head to the field then. Agreed. Um, first, uh, before we go, everybody needs to pick what potions. What were what were they? There are four potions of healing, one potion of clairvoyance, and two potions of animal friendship. The clairvoyance. I would like the healing one. I'll take, take a animal healing. friendship. Uh, I'll take a healing one as well. All right. Three healings. So under your guys' inventory, go ahead and uh, add in that you took uh, that potion, or make a note that you have. We it. have. Do we walk past the inn before we head to the field, or do we? I will. I will ask the innkeeper something. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, who's going with who then? If we're going to the field, I want to go to the field because I know a little bit about the, outdoors and shit. I'll go to the field as well. I'll go with the clergy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So Phoenix and Mac are go or going to the field. And when um, I get we're... to the field, I'm gonna pee in it. Fine. <laughs> 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 go for it. Uh, Moon, are you going to the field as well, or are you going to the inn? Going to the field. Going to the field. All right. All right, so we'll start with the inn since McClure and uh, Morgana would make it there first. Uh, the innkeeper seems to be in his normal place, checking the shelves, making sure everything's clean, everything's organized. So as you come on in, the innkeeper turns around, see people come in. Well, you're back so soon. I'm an innkeeper. I got questions. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, um, I w walk up to the innkeeper and ask how many people are staying in the inn. Well, aside from your uh, your very uh, generous friend from last night, there's supposed to be one other person, though. That, that let... isn't included with our group. Oh, outside of your group, of course. She let maybe a good 25, 30 minutes before y'all came down. Uh, it was a young lady. Um. A bit, a bit younger than yourselves, by the looks of you. She had dark hair. Uh, quite lovely for someone wearing so much armor. And uh, she had a sword, rather, rather big one. So another hunter, potentially. No, I think about you. Only been in the area for a day, day and a half. Didn't talk much about her business. She said. Did she say where she like where she may be heading, or did you notice the direction that she went after she left? If this uh, one good eye serves me well, when she left the building, she seemed to be heading to the east. Ah, back! I knew what she was gonna say. I tried to warn her about you know the stories in the bog, but she wasn't hearing none of it. She just put on a smile, thanked me for letting her know, and carried on her way. Does the inn maiden stay here as well? Oh, Natalie, of course. So Any there's, strange there's the figures? broker. Uh, if you're assuming you're speaking of the gentleman that was with the nobleman, I have not seen him for about as long as I haven't seen the nobleman. It's been a few days, a couple days. I did stay here. How did you how did you lose your eye? Oh this and he kinda of points to the one obviously fake eye that's just all white. Oh it was a... Uh, it was a bunch of rabble some years ago. There was a uh, some really rowdy blokes coming into town. Uh they just wanted a place to stay, they drank, they got rowdy. At the time, uh Catherine was here visiting visiting Natalie for a little bit, you know, discussing about if she should start working part time here to help get some extra coin for her father. And well, let's just say the brutes weren't exactly being kind to the ladies. So, Our men being men, then exactly. Let's so, look over at him. As the owner of this establishment, I wasn't taking you too kindly to. You know, a friend's daughter and my employee being treated in such a manner. I promptly walked up to them, 
expressed my concerns, asked them politely to leave, and well, one of them decided to pull a dagger on me. Rough business running in. Re really awkward question. Can you remember the dagger? Oh yeah, I remember that very well. It was uh, rather long. The blade wasn't straight. It was it swerved a bit. It had a really wide guard. I think the guard was made of bronze, I believe. And the handle was it was wrapped in this very very worn leather, but there was something strange about it. When he when he'd swing it around, it started to make a strange noise, almost like it whistled. So. Long sword blade, white bronze guard, and a hand wrapped in worn leather. You say made a whistling noise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, somewhere between a person whistling or um, almost like the chirping of a bird. Though well, thankfully we did have some other guests who arrived in town that night, and uh, upon hearing the scuffle and a little too late to save my eye, they politely came down, saw the rabble, and. Uh, <laughs> well, there's, a reason. there's some uh, stains and marking on the floor over there. And he points towards a couple of the back tables, and you see there's damage to the floor where something was struck into the floor. And there's some obviously stains in the wood that something had sp spilled there or was left there for a while. I'm unsatisfied with what's happened, but I suppose we should head to the field. You know, should we mention the apothecary to him? No, uh, no, I, I don't, I don't trust the, uh, I don't trust the innkeeper. Okay. Alright, so you both, you both make your lead to go rejoin the others? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Meanwhile, back in the field, uh, Mac, as you and, um, Phoenix and Moon get there, you notice the field still has quite a bit of crops growing. Uh, some of them nearly ripe, some still need some time. Um... You do find a lot of footprints all over the place. Uh, very varying sizes of people. Uh, definitely footprints left behind by somebody or other and some others. Uh, you do, however, walking through the field, do find one spot where obviously someone had been harvesting some of the crop. But you notice also some of the crop is damaged. Uh, some of the corn stalks have been broken nearly in half or uprooted completely. Some of the other uh, uh, small shrubs that had some kind of berries or anything have been uh, trampled and squished. I'm gonna look from the air that area, and I'm gonna look mm -hmm. around my surroundings at anything I could see from from uh, uh, like like an ambush point for an ambush point maybe. Maybe check for animal footprints. Because this is where Catherine was kidnapped, okay? So I want to look for any ambush point at this point. See what direction they were coming from. And I would look for clues. I'll say make a survival check. To see where you think some places you would have uh, tried to hide if you are trying to ambush somebody in the spot. Okay, survival rolled 19. Okay, so the only places you can think of, especially given that this happens sometime possibly in the middle or later in the day, definitely hiding somewhere among the corn stalks, as there's quite a lot of them, so you wouldn't really notice someone passing through them if they were already there. Right. Uh, a lot of the shrubbery area is too low to hide in. Otherwise, the only other two spots you can see from here that would be a good place to hide but not a good spot to get here fast enough. There is the tree line to the west, but that's a, an additional, like, 50, 60 feet away. It's still quite a ways. Otherwise, there does seem to be, just to the side of the field, about a good 20, 30 feet back to the south. Um, it looks like there's a large shed where they keep... Uh, you imagine maybe some of the tools and uh, everything they use to harvest? Okay, so based on that knowledge, I am going to go into the cornfield and look for any any footprints, like anything padded down, like they've been there for a minute, wait, just waiting. Like oh, this, I was like saying in the meantime, yeah, he was going to do something too. Yeah, I was going to say. Right. Uh, like uh, I'm headed, 
I'm looking around right now. Like, we'll get back to mine. Let's get things. <laughs> Alright, Peace, what were you looking at? I was just gonna look around quickly. Make an investigation check, see if you find anything here that's out, out of place or not what you expected to find. You're not really finding much. A lot of what you may be looking for could possibly be out of sight or distorted by the uh, broker in uh, stocks and buried somewhere in the shrubberies. Oh, we, uh, okay, well, you can get back to mine now. Yeah, so uh, I'll go ahead and uh, base this off of the, your your 19 roll jazz of addition. As you look around through the stocks and try to find things that may have been signs of something being sitting there for a while you do find a couple spots where there are some small but really heavily in the ground like dents and as you look at them they do remind you of some things you saw by the other houses though there is one other thing that catches your attention off to the side of the one of the goblin sets closer to the shrubberies there is some smaller indentions or about the same size, but they're just single indentions. They're kind of spread out a little too far apart to have been like a goblin or something. Okay, I will head back um, with the rest of the group. Well, that's the thing. I'm like, well, if it's hard to see people in a cornfield, do you think they use animals to like sniff them out? As he actually brings this up, Mac, roll me a nature check. A nature check? Oh, yeah, right. I'll and I'll say roll it with advantage. So if go ahead at the top, there should be something that says advantage yep, normal. Yep, I see it. I see it. So I'm okay. I'm on advantage. I'm rolling nature again. So you think back for a second and immediately go back to the tracks you'd found. And as you look at the other sets that seem a little off to you, you place yourself a little to the side and look around and there's more. And it occurs to you, there was something else here with the goblin, but you're not quite sure what it was. I, um, um, who's all with us right now? Like, has has McLure and them all showed up yet? I'll say by this point, you guys been searching. They've they've regrouped with you. Okay, so I'm gonna turn to the group. You guys, not only goblins, but we got something smaller, a wee bit smaller. I'm finding smaller fingerprints kind of scattered throughout the area. I'm not real sure what's going on. I don't know if you guys got any insight in what they could be. But I really don't know. It's really trampled down, but the, it's smaller. In the cornfield over there, I found more goblin footprints. They were they were lurking. They were waiting for the to get Catherine. But they these other smaller us. ones, I don't know what they are. Anyone who wants to check out the uh, footprints that he uh, mentioned, go ahead and roll a nature check. All right, twenty-two, nice. Yeah. And twenty. So Moon, as you look it over. Your mind wanders a, a lot of research you've done, uh, both between magic and just general knowledge. And upon inspecting the tracks, you take notice of the size of it, the distance between each of the points, and then it dawns on you. The shape, the distance, it's possible that most, a lot of the tracks belong to the same being, but they weren't made separately. They were made at the same time. Without a doubt, and you're kind of questioning what's something like this doing in this area you're dealing with a large and i mean large species of spider the oh, fuck? Fuck that. Nope. Ah. <laughs> that's why a lot of the tracks seem small because the leg points aren't really that wide ah are you a beckon with me spider spider well, it made me think I know a little bit about spiders being in the wild. Uh, Mac, you're actually quite familiar. There really shouldn't be a lot of spiders this far east. Most of them should be more towards the central inland or further to the north. So you said east or north? Uh, more central or north. Central more inland. or north. You guys are far too east for them to so I, be. So, uh, so... McCall turns to the group. You guys, you know these like spiders are, and they're not from this area. And according to our investigation, um, the only spiders that I can recall that are from anywhere that we've investigated or have heard about our investigation is north. Ah. 
So north it is. We must head north. Agreed. Let's see, head towards the mines. See, see, just before we leave, can I... And this is actually not coming from, per se, in-game knowledge. But this would technically count as goblin riders. Because there is folklore that goblins used to ride giant spiders. However, though, where I come from, in um, the, the land, the only spiders big enough for goblins to ride that I know of are the frost spiders. So we're looking at uh, possibly frost uh, spiders. Are you asking if there's a if there's a rule that if you're familiar with that being a thing in your area? Oh no, I was I was going off of basic basic myth and lore from my head. Okay, but yes, I conclude that the uh, I concur with the conclusion of heading north to the mines. Hey, I, I'm just basing that on our investigation and uh, should have the, the, all the due spiders. Haste. Um, I um, would conclude that we may need to investigate the Eastern City at a later date. So what, uh, can I, like, um, kind of, like, uh, pace the area, just, just the general area, back and forth? See what I find? Sure. Um, I would say off of your scores so far, um, you do notice that there is some markings in the ground. Kind of, and it seems to explain why some of the stocks are broken. Uh, from what you can tell, she was dragged out of here. And she was dragged towards the south. She was dragged towards the south. Oh fuck! Uh, so I'm I'm gonna go ahead and um, let everybody in the group know that I found markings that Catherine was dragged to the south. Oh fuck! Wait, wait. Back to the south, to the south or from the south? To the south. She yeah, was dragged she was from this field to the south. But maybe she was dragged to the south to throw people off the track to the north. Aye. That would be, that would be, that that would be a. Uh, so that would be a good plan. So follow him for the follow these tracks to the south for a ways, and see if they veer off. I I do so. Tragic. Alright. As you continue to follow them, they go south a good ways. Uh, they seem to go into the tree line, and as you reach the tree line, that's where you start seeing um, evidence that Moon was right. There's signs of, like, leftover pieces of webbing on, like, trees and brush around here. And the trail seems to go into the tree line, shifts to the east. And it like, seems to slowly start curving, like to an east-northward direction. It's so actually I... upon this point I can conclude this route was the best option because going northward would cut through the village. Ah, uh, well, that's why they took them south first. Yes. Okay. So I come back to the group. Um, you guys, the trail leads east, but then goes like east-north, and it kind of turns towards the north they're trying to get around the they're trying to get around the village they're taking them north all right then why hopefully she's still alive we need to head north we need to go north and we need to go asap because if this girl's still alive we need to get her out of there yeah it's been already been seven eight days yeah yeah we, we need north. to go north and we need to go now yeah as far as you all know if you guys go by foot it's to take you at least a half day and by this point it's about noon. It's going to take us till cool. about midnight, midnight to get there. So, so we let's can see if we can, Let's go into town. You guys, let's go into town and see if we can't uh, charter a carriage or something to take us north. Horses. Or horses or anything. Anything we can get our hands on that will take us faster than on foot. <laughs> All right. Let's hoof it back to the village as fast as we can. Let's go. Uh, so, is uh, anyone in particular you guys are looking to ask about regarding uh, any kind of? I hate to ask him, but the innkeeper. It's probably got a stable. Right. So you're gonna ask the innkeeper about it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the best thing. Right. So as you guys waltz back on into the inn, the innkeeper's uh uh. Seems to be just uh, laying some things out on the table in front of him. It looks up to you all. Well, if I had more guests with traffic like you guys, I'd be making better money. Um, 
Okay. Is there anywhere we can get some horses or, or, or charter a carriage or something? Well, as far as a carriage, we're not expecting any kind of caravan to come back into town for at least another day. But as far as if you just need some horses, just head further east towards the bog. Uh, before you reach the bog, at least another oh, 120, 200 feet from here, somewhere in there, uh, you'll find old Marcus's ranch. He might have some cattle left. Cattle. We need horses. Well, he deals in everything. Trust you me. Even uh, if he's got if he's, if he's got cattle, he probably has horses. Yep. Got around that cattle up somehow. Think? Should we go check it out? Should we go? Should we go? How see far if away is he? Uh, if you leave now and uh, keep your feet, you should make it within the hour. Then let's go, guys. Let's just run, let's let's run for let's four. So as you guys head that way, you eventually uh. End up getting there a little quicker than you were expecting to. Uh, it seems the land going this way isn't too bad yet. You imagine if it was the bog, it'd be a lot worse. Uh, but you make it there within 15, 20 minutes. Uh, off in the distance, you see a uh, couple of buildings. Uh, the biggest one being bright and red. A uh, lot of fenced off areas. And as you're walking through, you're seeing cows, pigs, goats. A uh, lot of variety of animals, and one particular pen strikes everyone as just a little bit odd. But as you look inside the other pen and what's in there, he actually has rather large lizards, some of them with the uh, various designs and horns. Um, how many, is the only one here proficient in nature, uh, uh, Mac? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, my man's proficient. Oh, I'll see if man. anyone's proficient in nature or in history. Go ahead and roll that and see if you recognize what this creature is. So, um, Mac and Moon, you two recognize this creature uh, fairly quickly because of its history and its biology. Uh, these are Gardrix. Gardrix. These uh, creatures have been basically. You could say they were made more so that they were. Uh, bread um through various rituals and magics involving dragons they created these creatures uh they're very fierce and they can be very loyal and taught to obey simple commands uh there's some people in the world especially of higher society that sometimes would prefer these creatures over like guard dogs okay so i have questions for for the the guy that owns the place uh as you guys continue walking towards his estate you see he's actually out there and he's currently uh, feeding a bunch of goats. It's a half elven gentleman, kind of tattered clothing, got a lot of dirt on his face right now. Uh, that's certainly a, a lot of you, and uh, we would just be it... renting them from a short for a short time. We would return them when our business in the north is done. Oh, you're heading to the north. Yes. Yep. Okay. And you. Uh, would prefer horses, oxen. Horses. Horses. Fast. Well, as fast as you can. And possibly if a carriage, if you got one, that would help out tremendously. Carriage would slow us throw, down. Yeah. I'll even throw in gold for that, you guys. I'll throw in the gold. Don't I'm worry. Don't worry. worry. It's got a um, that yeah, busted I'm up old thing, and off to the side you see um, the an open top wagon that hasn't been in use for. Looks like some time it's needs a bit touching up. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll pass on that, you guys. Let's just stick with the horses, yeah. All right. Do you just need one for each of you, or you need any extra? Well, really, really, I can uh, jump from tree to tree. It's my fellow fellow mates here that need need some horses. <laughs> I would take one for everyone, plus an extra. And keep... I'll jump from tree to tree, man. I'm a fucking wood elf. I'll, I'll jump around tree to tree. Yeah, you're but like if we... Character. You're like a it, monkey, dude. If we hit land, we'll flat land, you know. You won't be able to keep up with us. No. No, I, um, I say that in joke. Okay. Is that better? I say that in joke. That's to fine. the farmer. <laughs> Uh, your, uh, your elven friend's very, uh, he's something else. 
Yeah. Anyways. So you think I'm something else now? Wait until I have a few ales. Huh? I'm a high elf. Sounds like you should spend more time with Gregor, but sadly he's out on errands right now. Oh, that's too bad. But well, we're on business anyway. True. True. No. I, I gotta keep to no the drinking. Task of your hand. Now, as far as the horses, let's say. And you said you're bringing them back, right? I. It's a plan. Yep. Unless we all die. And if we, any of your horses die, we will pay for them. Well, that's what I'm thinking about, because going that way, there's some possibility they might not come back. Well, we are trying to rescue a young girl who was kidnapped, hopefully. If that's the case, I'll purchase one. Well, considering you're going to be renting them and not keeping them, we'll say, we'll say 25 gold pieces for the lot. And if any turned up dead, there'll be an additional seven gold per dead horse. So how much gold per lot? Twenty-five. A lot of it. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. So like, if if they all died, it'd be twenty-five gold. <clears throat> no, it'd be, it'd be an additional seven per dead horse. Okay, so twenty-five gold just to get the horses. Yep. I got fourteen. You guys, I got fourteen gold. I have 25 gold. I got 25. I got 25 gold as well. And how much did you say would be the lot? 25. 25. Should we each put in five? Yeah, I would say yes. I. I concur. So that's going to take me to nine. Wait. I got nine gold. I got nine gold right now. Twenty. All right. Let's saddle up and ride out. So after the transaction, you see the farmer's happy to hook you guys up. Uh, you guys got the horses. They're all saddled up. Um, in the event that some of them start to get uh, a little feisty, he does uh, add it up extra pouch with some uh, uh some fruits and vegetables from the farm in case you know the horses might need a little insensitive okay hi right. once he's got yeah, you guys all lined up at the end of the farm he gives a whistle and uh the horses all take off like rockets <laughs> whoa well i guess we're going north yeah yep he, he pointed yep. you in the north direction all right and ass north. We're on horses now. Yeah. To the mines. Shit. So, who here feels lucky? I never feel lucky, so don't even fucking look at me. I've been rolling like shit tonight, but my luck could be rolling in. That's same. I no mean, I rolled lucky? lucky too, but screw it. I'll go for a tragic. Do, like, Alright, be roll me a D twenty. Don't get us into a fight. Well do get us into a fight. Uh, but don't get us into a fight. Fucking bring <laughs> it. Bring it. I'm ready to fucking jump up into a tree and start Oh, nineteen. Not bad though. Alright. I had it all. Oh. You guys actually <coughs> make pretty good time. Um what should have been a half day's travel, you guys uh, end up reaching the edge of the mountain range where the mines will be. Uh, within about within about four hours. Ah. Damn. Damn. Hell hey, yeah. Of time. So we're looking at like four o'clock in the afternoon now or something like that. Let's give or take the time it took you to get to the farm. Plus get the dealing situated. It's almost five. Yeah, almost five. Okay. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. We still got daylight, yeah. man. It won't matter once we go into the mines. No, it won't. We got torches, though. We got torches. Yes. I, can, I can just cast fire. I'm good. <laughs> Most of you can see in the see in the dark. I can't. That's true. Oh, yeah, I can see in the dark. Damn it, Claire is screwed. <laughs> I can see in the dark. I don't need a torch. Yeah. You guys want hey, my torches? Can I can I give shit to people? Oh, we got torches. You might want the torches. Hey, can I, hey, can I give fine. shit my, to people? My... I can see in the dark as well. <laughs> 
It's fine though, my faith will protect me and guide me. Hey, but uh, but uh, literally, can I give some of my? Uh, I'm asking a legitimate. We question. have we can have torches. Give well, you you torch? can, but each of our kids came with a torch. I know, so, so but I'm but I'm saying like I'm gonna have a stockpile of torches. So like if like y'all well, get yeah, one you, torch, I yeah, can give them can. away. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Actually, you can because yeah. all you'd have to do all you'd have to do is remove it from your item then item list, and then we would add it to us. Yeah. It, okay. I was just making sure it was like game legit. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can always rule. hand things to other people. Oh, yeah, no. It's, okay. As long as you say that, that they understand the people need something so it doesn't get lost in translation that, oh, that something just went poop. I have a lovely stash of TT Billet and Ooh. Ooh. All right. I am on my so so we're at the entrance of the mines. Yep, you're just at the bottom of the uh, cliff that leads to the mines. Oh, All right, so I start heading towards the mines to the entrance. I follow. Oh, like the we walk up. <laughs> can we have someone to survey the area first? I can survey the area. I, I got survival and fucking nature and all of that shit. That's what I'm saying. Um, can, is someone able to survey the area? Yes, I can. I will survey the area. I'm not just marching up there randomly. I'm just walking up slowly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, when when you're surveying the area, are you what are you prioritizing? Are you prioritizing the outside layout of the mines, or are you prioritizing the pathways and stability of the mountainside? Probably pathways and stability of the mountainside. All right, I'll say, give me a survival check then, as you go through these and see, you know, what's safe, what's not safe. There we go, right there. Thirteen. All right. Uh, most of the sp uh, most of the walkways leading up and around the mountain range to each different location are fairly wide. It's about like 15 feet. So, best guess from the way they look, you think people used to bring carts up here and bring them down. So it's pretty it's pretty sturdy. They made sure that if they need uh, they need the extra room. They carved out a good piece that's not gonna just break off randomly. Okay, so I'm gonna let the group know. Uh, yeah, you guys. I feel as though there was a lot of a lot of carts going through here, whether it be trade or whatnot. Um, there's def definitely been traffic through here um, with the stability of everything and the wideness of the trail. There's definitely been carts and stuff coming up through here. I, I would at least like to prepare to enter the mine, so I'd like to take out my torch, but not light it. All right, anyway. I take out my sword and shield. Or not my sword, my warhammer and shield. I take right. out my long bow and arrow. Is it a Warhammer 200 weapon? No, it can be one hand I'm, because I'm proficient with uh, the way my um, class is skilled. I can use it one handed or two handed. Oh, oh shit, I don't think I have a torch. She, she's a fucking angel. You need a torch? I got a ton of them. Because I'm a war cleric and I'm proficient with either one handed or I can see in the dark, so like, if you, if you need a torch, I can give you a bunch of torches. I yeah, no, I need it. Oh crap! I I need a torch. <laughs> I'll take, give me I'll like take I'll, torch. I'll give you like like three of them, yeah. So I'll 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 give you three torches. I'll make that seven on my end. I'll go ahead and use. So it's gonna be dark inside there, right? You're pretty sure it might be, unless there's something in there that's sliding the way. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna cast the light the spell on the end of my sword or end of my warhammer, so it lights up. Kind of gives off um, the light. I'll, I'll, with my free hand, I'll draw my sword. All right. My so now ready. the for Warhammer acts as a big uh, light. Like a light. Yep. Yeah. So I've, I've got my torch in my left hand, my sword in. My... Uh, keep in mind for player knowledge, you can use the torch as a weapon. Oh, hey, trust me, I have time to. Um, I'm gonna do the same as McClary. Yeah. As you guys begin uh, right. up, uh, up the mountainside towards the mine shafts, you realize. From the outside here, you see five openings. Oh, ah, fuck. All right. I check for footprints in each opening. There we All go. Right. Tra tragic Brooke, you go to the basement. Not going alone though, into any place. To be Matt fair, though, Tragic can't. Tra Tragic's DM. <laughs> He's, He's not be physically everywhere. here. He is everywhere. <laughs> He's everywhere. Wait, He's everywhere. I, I wish Listen. I wish I had my 
I wish I had my passion for claw voice, but unfortunately, yeah, with only the laptop, I don't. But can I sit there and be like, Oh, divine spirit of the M, let us know what path to take! Uh, let me just roll the divine spite moon real quick. <laughs> what? <laughs> I am what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I was saying, let me just roll to Divine Smite Moon real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but I searched the area for any clues to uh, which, uh, which, which uh, opening one, one anybody went through. Which one? Uh, investigation. See if you find anything that is a sign that someone or something came through any place. Nah, I'll roll it as well to yeah. see. Uh, no. Another natural one, Smokey. What's going on? As, as Gimli's one Dude, said... No sign of your quarry, but what bare rock can tell. <laughs> well, uh, see, see, I, I, I'm not that proficient in investigation, so I was hoping he was going to yeah. say nature or something. Yeah, but even still, though, the, it just gives you, um, cause I, like, you, you, you get a plus two in it, but you rolled a natural one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll two, cause I'm gonna look at. All right. Come on, come on. Twelve. Yeah. Oh, that's better. The only thing you can definitely make out from these entrances, though, is you don't think much has gone through here in some time, but the fir the one closest to the bottom and the top two do show signs of webbing. So now we have three mm. holes to look at. I wanna I wanna oh, go look at the I wanna go look at this webbing and maybe any prints the webbing. They're all kind of big, and yeah, here and there there are cotton. Like you see, what it looks like uh, looks like some rabbits, some birds. Can I check to see if the webbing's been disturbed? Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll a uh, investigation on that as well. Oh my god! Between the yeah, between the darkness of the overhead and how some of the webbings are formed, it's hard to tell what's been disturbed and what's just designed that way. I would yeah. like to investigate for the same thing. Go for it. Damn it! Oh, we got <laughs> fucking a moon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. What are they searching Most... at? If the web, the web, the web, the web's been disturbed. <laughs> the web's in, with the webbing's been disturbed. If okay. it's been disturbed, no, we'll, so, yeah. yeah, if it's been disturbed. Essentially, I've looked at it and went, "Yep, yep, that's webbing." <laughs> <Same here>. <laughs> <laughs> he, he pretty much got the same as me. <laughs> yeah. Green man came up to me and went, "I concur with Lord McCall's conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, there is webbing here." Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll walk up to the webbing and kind of. No. Oh, oh no, I can't. Ah, oh, bollocks. I'm not gonna touch it. That would be bad. No, don't touch it. Put put my light uh, again and again, my warhammer, towards the webbing to see if there's any breaks. Uh, each webbing you look at with the, with your light. If there's any breaks in it, it's just where something was eaten. I want to look in Hang this on, webbing, I... if there's any symbols within the webbing, like like the spider um, um, webbed a symbol. Uh, hmm. I mean, is, is Smokey, like, assuming that these spiders are intelligent? <laughs> if they are, why the fuck are they with goblins? <laughs> no, oh, it's, it's, it's dark magic. This could go anywhere, man. This could go anywhere. I'll just say roll me uh, just a straight intelligence check. Uh, it's a save, but that'll work too. Uh, 13. <laughs> what? Uh, what, yeah, what's that mean? That's normally what you would roll if something was your mind via intelligence. Oh, yeah. Okay. Intelligence save. Uh, as you look through the webbing, most of it's very patterned. There's not really, like, something that looks like legible symbolism in it. Yep. I say yeah. we. Alright, I would head to the next page because this doesn't Hang look on, wait, 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 we have the advantage here. Yes, we no do. One wants, no one wants to touch the web and hit that motherfucker as hard as you can. Try and blow something out. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, fine. I will, uh, since I'm right there in front of it. I'm scared the shit out of Brook while we're doing it. <laughs> Sacred flame, the webs. Okay, as you sacred flame, uh, flame the webbing for a solid like half minute, no response. Okay. But then, after another half minute, you guys hear a lot of clicking sounds. Clicking. Spiders incoming. Back up. <laughs> yep. There's spiders incoming. And as you, <laughs> uh, 
I can't believe I'm saying this. Are you guys actually looking down the tunnel, or are you just moving out of the way of the tunnel? I'm backing I'm up, looking. looking. Down the tunnel. I'm like With standing at the end of the tunnel. And the arrow in hand. So as you look down, those of you who have dark vision, you see way back there, coming this way, just in patches of gray, because you can't make out color that far down. You see a lot of on the ground, on the walls, on the ceiling. Spiders. Hey, can, can I quickly, can I quickly unequip torch and reequip shield? Back up, back up, back up, guys. I hop, I hop on the high ground. I hop on the high ground. I pull up my left <laughs> I can't spiders, go in the trees, but there. I'm going into high ground, man. Fuck the, the, like spite, the, spite, we the spiders, the spiders, the spiders emerge in the cave. <laughs> spiders emerge in the cave. Smokey, um, because like I have high ground. No, no, no. I, I'm talking about like, um, can I get up on top of where the cave entrance is or next to it? You can, but uh, I'll say, as you guys are looking, from your dark vision, we can make out. There are, you're losing count because you can't exactly count all the movement, but your best guess from the floor to the walls to the ceiling, there are probably hundreds if not thousands of tiny little spiders crawling off the walls towards the entrance. Get out, out. I we need a spell. We need we need a fucking flame spell like right now. Fire, yes. Don't have a flame spell. All they had was sacred flame and that does not an actual flame it is a radiant spell what is well, if, we, if, if we if we back black if we back away from the Our the brain. mine cavern if we back away from the mine cavern it means that they all have to go on the ground giving us a slight more advantage yeah that's true the ones on the wall the ones on the wall and the uh, ceilings will have to come to the floor however okay. though we have, do have a oh wait uh, check, do i have a we have torches, guys. Let's light a fire in front of the entrance. I can cast a. Bomb. I concur to that. I concur to that. Wait, Anyone move. got alcohol on them? Wait, Moomin. No. Uh, I don't have oh, any oh. alcohol. Hey, and Moomin can cast bonfire. Ah, Moomin can cast bonfire. Yes. What do you do? Do you fuck this up? If, 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 oh, if yeah, you fuck yeah, this yeah. up, Moomin. <laughs> <laughs> But if if you if we cast specifically bonfire at the entrance, because the entrance must be of relative size. And it's big enough so, to fit you guys. So how big's the ca cabin wall to wall? Wall to wall, it's about ten feet. How big's how big's the bonfire spell? Hey, does it just create a campfire, or does it actually create a bonfire? Uh, let's see the spell. It would create a bonfire that's a five foot cube. If we if we place that in if we place that in the center of the cave mouth, that should deter a good portion of them, because the, the yeah. heat emanating from a bonfire is a fair amount. Do you think it, it might be enough to keep them from wanting to leave the entrance? Yeah, because that still gives us four more entrances, and two of them still have webbing. There could have been a way we could have avoided the spiders, possibly. I was hoping to lure out giant spiders, okay? I didn't expect a horde of baby spiders to be running towards <laughs> us at this point. My idea was was to lure out giant spiders, fight them in the open where we have the advantage, and then all of a sudden, these little offspring pieces of shit have decided, Oh, look, there's something over there! <laughs> well, I knew disturbing the web was a bad fucking idea, but... Uh, so you just went up here by sacred flame! <laughs> You well, just went along with my plan. Is there is there a possible did, way I can I use like... my stealth in this situation? Yeah, yeah save, you save yourself, you man. We'll be fine. In, in, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> no. 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 McCall, pulls out, McCall pulls out a spidey suit. Like I'm one of you guys. No. <laughs> hey, you don't like r rub spider guts on me. I don't fucking know. You know, like 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 uh uh uh. uh uh, walking Dead, when they rub the fucking guts of the fucking yeah, zombies I, I on them, they can't do don't think that works with, them. I don't think that works with spiders. Uh, yeah, not to mention, you don't, you don't the see pro anything around that you could use from a spider, minus the ones coming at you. You'd have to kill the spiders first to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, so if... But I only so, gotta kill one, though, right? <sighs> oh, no, these no, are tiny. 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 This is, yeah, this is, a, yeah, this is hundreds of thousands of itty bitty spiders. Yeah, you cast a um, bonfire. 
Yeah, Red yeah. is there about to make it so that way he burns the shit out of him. Good portion of. Them. I would agree with that. I'm I'm also gonna put my I'm also gonna put my sword away and I'm gonna have the torch and shield in hand. I'm going I'm going torch and shield as well. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that strategy as well and light my torch. So, Moon Man, are you casting the uh, bonfire spell in the entryway? Yeah. Moon Man, if you screw this up, we're dead. By the way. No pressure. Okay, so the bonfire is in place, and they haven't reached it yet, so... As you guys are there by the entrance, the instant the spiders get within five feet of that bonfire, you notice they come to a stop, and they seem to be slowly backing off. I say, while that bonfire is burning, we go another way. We go in one of the ways out the webs? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That never even occurred to me. What? Why didn't we just fuck off? What if the spiders hadn't got to, if if the spiders hadn't got to us yet, we could have burned the stuff because we never touched them, and then just went to another entrance, luring all the spiders out, and we would have been in a different entrance. I didn't oh. even think of that. Too late for that now. <laughs> all right, let's yeah, get in. It's too late now. Let's get in this motherfucker. What? 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 We've only got two other entrances though that we can pick. Yep. One of the two without fucking spider webs. Pick the first one that had, doesn't have spider webs. Right, I you agree. Go down and check that one out. Yep. yep. As you guys start slowly making your way into it, you do notice it seems to break off after so much of a ways in. Left to right, up or down, I'm, I'm confused on which way we're going. It, it, it turns into a T section. There's a way left and a way right. Uh, uh right or left good. goes toward. Uh, which <laughs> way? Right or left goes towards the bonfire. How far can I see down one of the. One of the choices. Uh, both of them seem to turn about 20 to 30 feet uh, down. Ah. Can I use divine sense to try and basically smell which way to go? Um, what did it, how did, uh, what does it say how your divine sense works? Uh, design, divine, uh, divine sense works as a like it basically creates like a an odor for um, on like how evil something is essentially because like, so, i'm assuming what's in this place is going to be somewhat evil oh, okay so it's an expression you just understand that the presence of so if something's divine or evil is within a certain range all right so i can't really use it as like uh oh, we should go left because it thinks more yeah so what it is is you're reaching out with your senses to detect if something's out there i feel like i can use it to like <coughs> pick between left or right like, it's not like I'm going to hear music coming from the left. Uh, that being the case, you do get this really bad taste in your mouth from both directions. Though, to your right, far more so than your left. Wait, can I, can I point out to the group first about, um, the right? Using my divine, divine presence that the right has gave a more disgusting taste than the left. <laughs> the, the, the right tastes like horseshit, while the left only tastes cat piss. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know this. <laughs> just go along with it. <laughs> yeah, so, so something just feels wrong to you about the right direction compared to the left. So you tasted all <laughs> shit. So basically, I want to concur with that that thing. So what would I use? Um, <coughs> uh, let's say you use your investigation to determine which path is the which way to go. Yeah, shit. I knew I was gonna have it very good on that one. No, you're 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 seeing marks in every which direction in, in this area. I didn't help. Can I try? Oh, uh, you're welcome to try. There we go. You notice there's a lot more traffic to the right than the left. All right. <laughs> looks oh, like we're going right. More interesting. All right, let's head right. I say right. And say it. Say it clearly now. Uh, question: As you guys are proceeding forward, you notice that the. Uh, cavern seems to be going to get more narrow what's the marching order you guys are taking single file well, see, I since say. i had it since i fucked up night vision in front yeah night vision in front yeah i have night vision i still have i think the light cantrip uh i'm not sure how long oh it lasts until i dispel it all right so morgana up front who beside morgana one hour uh, uh, i'll go behind morgana i'll go behind uh, my 
I'll go behind Phoenix. All right, so you guys are going single file? And if it's narrow, I would suppose that'd be the best bet. So, Morgana, what's your passive perception? Passive perception is... 13. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm just... And McClure and uh, Smokies, what are your guys'? My, Man, my character, she closed because I was looking at the map. Uh, my passive wisdom is perception. So there should be a... Um, again? There should be a number next to it. Well, it doesn't nine. have it. Oh, 15. And Phoenix? Mine's 12. Are you guys trying to move quietly or not really? Oh, yeah. Well, Stylism you know, my character and... is because of my stealth background. So I'm moving. So in that case, um, Smokey and Moon, uh, both of you give me a uh, stealth check. Whereas the rest of you, uh, give me a stealth check with disadvantage because of your armor. All right, here goes the uh, clink, 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 clink. Wow, I got a 22 on my stealth check. Fuck yeah. Very nice. Damn. I was being sneaky and then I just cut out a loud fart. Oh, oh and my stealth is a negative man. one to boot, dude. <laughs> I'm at eight. Ooh, McLure. Fuck. I missed. Three. Oh. Fucking three. <laughs> <laughs> the, worst part, the worst, the worst part is though, is I actually all really great, other than the disadvantage. Hey, yeah. Yes. I, I feel that my, I, I generally feel that like, uh, Smokey's like, okay, guys, <laughs> or McCall's like, okay, guys, we have to be quiet. My character's like, that's him. Sorry. <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Morgan's just like, walking. <laughs> what feels like about halfway through, uh, this part of the cavern, uh. Phoenix from behind you, Smokey from beside you, and Moon just ahead of you. Uh, you hear uh, two voices in unison screaming, common, Intruder! Woo! No. And that's where we're going to pick up next week.